Well, this is the third day of the fast of Daniel. And here in Portland, we're reading uh, Luke 5 and 6 today. Then beginning tomorrow, we're just going to read one chapter from chapter 7 on until we, we end it at the, the end of the fast of Daniel, these 21 days. So as you're reading these passages today, it's chapter 5 and chapter 6 of Luke. Think about these things uh, that you read. Don't, don't treat anything as if it's normal because understand that the Bible doesn't add unnecessary details. If, if there's some detail that's added, it's because you need to know that and there's something, something about that detail that is important. God doesn't waste his words. He doesn't just fill the Bible with fluff. There's no fluff in the Bible. There, there are some things that you may not understand, but there is a very good reason behind it. So pay close attention. And as you read Luke 5 and 6, don't just read it to learn things, to learn facts. We need to apply the word of God to our own life. Otherwise, it's useless. It's, it's, it's going to do harm to us if we're not look, reading it and studying it that way. We need to apply the word of God to ourselves first before we apply it to anything else. So there's a lot to talk about, but I'd like to talk about chapter 5. When Jesus was there teaching and he used Peter's boat and then... Afterwards, so after Jesus had used, Jesus was preaching from Peter's boat. Then afterwards, you know, Peter and John had, Peter, John, uh, Peter, Andrew, James, and John had been fishing all night long and they caught nothing. And they were there mending their nets. So at the end of Jesus' message, he looked over to Peter and told him, uh, put your Put your boat out into the deep water and let down your nets. And Peter said, Lord, we've been fishing all night. We caught nothing. But because you say, I'll do it. And so he obeyed. Then it says in, in verse 6 of chapter 5, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. Then the next verse, it says, they called, um, this is James, uh, Peter and Andrew, and they called James and John to come with their boat because their, their nets were about to rip. There were so many fish. So the other boat came, it says, and they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. There were so many fish their nets were about to break. Their nets were breaking. They filled not just one boat, but two boats. Jesus didn't say both boats to God. He sent one out. But there were so many fish. It was way too many for one boat. And so they were coming into shore, both boats, and they're about to sink. They're so low in the water. So this is the kind of thing that God wants to do in our life. He wants to push us to the, to cause us to see things we've never seen before. This is who God is. God is miraculous. God does amazing things. He, he wants to, you know, if, if that was normal for them to catch that many fish, their nets would have been stronger. Their boats would have been bigger. But their nets and their boats weren't made for this number of fish because that was abnormal. It never happened. If that was a normal occurrence, things would have been different. So what, what Jesus did for them was amazing. God wants to do the same with you. Doesn't matter what your situation is. Doesn't matter what you've done in the past, what mistakes you've made. If you have faith in God, he wants to do amazing things. For your nets to be tearing, for your boats to be sinking. They're so full of fish. And that means something different to each one of us.
That's what God wants to do. But then, and so because of this, it says, but when Simon Peter saw it, this huge catch of fish, and he had worked all night long and hadn't caught anything. When he saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees. You know, what is he saying there? He fell down at Jesus' knees and saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. So this miracle impressed him and he this convinced Peter that this Jesus truly was God. That catch of fish to you may seem, oh, that was nice, you know, but no, for Peter, it was proof that Jesus was God. That was such a big deal for him. He, he must have never, ever come even close to that catch of fish. And so this was proof that Jesus was God. So he came down and fell on his knees and said, Jesus, please leave here. I'm not, I'm not worthy to be in your presence. I'm a sinful man. And, but his actions proved the opposite. It didn't prove that he'd never done anything wrong, that he hadn't been sinful. I'm sure he was speaking the truth, but his attitude of coming and falling at Jesus' knees at his feet and confessing this shows that there's hope for him, that he's ready to change. He's, this is an attitude of humility right there. He was, he was acknowledging who Jesus was. And he acknowledged that, that I'm unworthy to be in the presence of something so great. Then amazingly, in verse 10, Jesus Jesus told him to get up and Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. You're not going to be catching fish anymore. You're going to be catching men. So instead of Jesus leaving and, and rejecting Peter, he said, Peter, I'm going to teach you to do what I'm doing. Come and join me. Come and be a part of what I'm doing. So that must have blown Peter away that he was so convinced that he was unworthy to be in Jesus' presence. And Jesus said, you are, you have the potential to work together with me. I want you by my side every single day for the next three years. I want you by my side. I'm going to teach you to do what I'm doing. And what did, what did Peter do? like some others. Did he say, no, 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 I can't do that. No, you know, my father and, and my boat, my business, my, my wife, my children, um, he didn't make any excuses. Peter, Andrew, James, and John left their boats, left their nets, and left. And they began to do the work of God. They left their life behind. How are they going to support their families? How are they going to support you know, what's going to happen to their business? What's going to happen to their boats and their nets? Those are valuable things. They just knew that they were going to follow God. In this fast of Daniel, this explains a lot here. First of all, don't think that throughout Peter's life, he was catching this number of fish. He wasn't. There were, he went through lean times. There are times that he... He and the others went through persecution. They went through hard times, difficult times. They saw miracles, but there are times that God allows us to go through deserts, through difficult times, lean times, where what we're praying for isn't happening because God is doing a bigger miracle. He's changing you on the inside. He's developing your faith because what kind of faith is it if, you know, you, you pray and you see miracles constantly. You're going to be a baby in your faith because you don't know how to wait. You don't know how to persevere when things are not going your way. If you get everything you want, you're going to be spoiled. So in the beginning, God did this great thing. But then there were times that, that Peter was really challenged to stay firm, even the, 
even though people were saying horrible things about them. And the other one is that, the other point I wanted to make is that, like we're talking about in, in this first week of the fast of Daniel's, that, you know, baptism in water. This was kind of a baptism in fire that Jesus challenged him. Give up everything. Give up everything for me. Follow me. In other words, Peter had to let go of the world, let go of his boat, let go of his nets, let go of his job, his business, and follow Jesus, not knowing where he was going to go, where he was going to get his next meal from. So he was ready to trust in God and die to the world. And so... Um, the Bible doesn't really talk about it, but I'm sure he was baptized. Maybe Jesus baptized him. Maybe he was baptized by John the Baptist. But I'm sure he went through a baptism. But this was like a baptism in fire. And it was a, it was a, a moment where he showed he was ready to go all the way with God. When you're holding on to things in life, when the things that you don't, when, when there are things that you refuse to give up for God, even though you know God is asking, so it's going to hold you back. It's going to block you from receiving the Holy Spirit, block you from being filled with God. When, when we want to insist on living our life the way that we want, we're br being so proud when we know that God is asking us to do something and we, we don't do that and we insist on living life our own way, we are essentially saying, God, I'm smarter than you. I know more than you. No, 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 th this life that you're asking me to live, that's not, that's not for me. That's not, that's not a good life. I know what's going to make me happy. I know what's good for me. How proud, how arrogant. The creator of the universe is calling us to a better life because he knows what's a better life and we refuse to accept it. So this first week, it's important for us to ask ourselves, have I died to the world? Have I died to the flesh? And listen, even those of you who are baptized in the Holy Spirit, we need to be dying every day. There, there are temptations that come. We have to constantly reaffirm this dedication, this sacrifice to God, leaving behind our boat, leaving behind our nets. They were leaving behind their father, their mother. I think Peter, we know, had a wife. The others, I don't think they did, but he, he left everything behind and he followed Jesus to do his will. So this, this week, those of you who want to be baptized in water, so let us know if you want to be baptized in water, you want to die to the world, die to yourself, to your ego, your ego, that part of you that's always getting offended at people. If people don't speak to you the right way, if people don't do what you think they're supposed to do, you get offended, you get angry at them. We need to die to this. That's not necessary. There are times where our ego is getting offended when we just misinterpreted what somebody did or said. And so it makes us look very foolish. So the answer, it's, it's a contradiction like many things in the Bible. If you want life, you have to die. You want real life, you have to die to the life you have right now. And believe that God is going to give you a better life. I know it's hard, but you know there are huge blessings waiting for us on the other side. Let's pray right now. And let's believe that today, the third day of the fast, we have 21 days. The third day of the fast, something amazing is going to happen in your life. You're going to have an amazing experience with God. And maybe it's going to be in the middle of a big problem where you're challenged to lose your temper and, and, and uh, try to get revenge on somebody. 
And maybe at that moment, you're going to feel the presence of God helping you and strengthening you and giving you wisdom. Let's pray right now. My Lord, we don't want these 21 days to just pass like any other day or time. We want to take advantage of this. This is an opportunity you've given to us. And in this fast of Daniel, some people are going to be saved because they're not saved. Others are going to be, are going to really die to themselves and start living for you. And my God, we pray that everyone is baptized in the Holy Spirit. That may not happen with everyone, but we, that's our desire. That's our goal. We want everyone who participates to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And for those who have the Holy Spirit to be revived and renewed and to go to another level, not to receive more of the Holy Spirit because they have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not divided. Nobody has half the Holy Spirit. But those who have the Holy Spirit help them to be more sensitive to you and to go all the way with you in Jesus' name. Talk to him right now. Make your prayer. Tell him what you want. Ask, tell him that you need him in your life. You can't stay without him. You need him to fill you with his presence. Talk to him right now, out loud. If you can, if you're not in a place where, where, you know, if you're not in public, but talk to him out loud. Talk to him like a friend. Don't make a prayer in your mind. Don't whisper. Speak like you would to a friend, like another person. Don't be afraid to speak to God. Speak to him right now. Ask him for this change. Ask him for the courage to die to yourself, to your ego, to your pride, to your greed, to this world. Decide right now that your life is going to another level, that you want to follow God like you've never followed him before. Oh, Holy Spirit, come and touch these people right now. Revive them, renew them. My Lord, give us the courage and the the determination to go all the way in this fast of Daniel, to be faithful to you, to seek you like we've never sought you before. My God, revive the church. There are, right now, there are millions of people around the world. There's an army that is doing the fast of Daniel in various languages in cultures, people from over 140 countries all over the world, people we've never seen before, countries we've never been to before, but they're all, we're all together in one spirit. Oh, my Lord, hear our prayer. Show us what we need to do to change. We don't want this fast of Daniel to end without us receiving the Holy Spirit. So show us what's wrong. Show us what's blocking us. Show us what we're holding on to that we need to let go of and give us the courage to listen to your voice and obey and to do exactly what you tell us to do. Take away our pride, this arrogance, thinking that we know how our life should be this greediness to live our life the way that we want. Free us from this so that we can experience real, true life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, my God. Be blessed, each one of you. Be revived. Today, the third day of the fast of Daniel is going to be something amazing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. So keep watching Bishop Joshua every, every evening at 11 o'clock New York time. He's on and showing testimonies and explaining the fast of Daniel. Let's immerse ourselves in this. It's going to be really great. The first night, Monday night, the testimony was amazing. This 
woman from Houston, Texas, and how, you know, when she was talking about the Holy Spirit and when she was baptizing the Holy Spirit and how she changed, it was very obvious, very clear that she really was baptized in the Holy Spirit. This wasn't something she was just talking about. It was real. And the change in her was so amazing. And she is a new person right now, nothing like the other person. That's something we all can have. All right, God bless. We're praying for you, stay strong and Let's not pollute our mind or our heart with the garbage of the world. I'll see you tomorrow on day four.